eight squads. Na 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 na. Eight squads. Na 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 na. Eight squads. Do 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 do. Eight squads. Do 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 do. Eight squads. Do 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 do. Hello YouTube, my name is Paul, hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back to another pickup video, the penultimate Hit Squad video. So yeah, another 10 games to show you. Um, yeah, I've got four left to find for the Sinclair Spectrum, four games I don't expect to get anytime soon. In fact, I probably won't be picking up now for at least 13 months as I give myself a break from eBay and Facebook and all that sort of stuff. Which I'm actually quite looking forward to, to be honest. I did mention that in my previous video. I did uh, about, about a week ago. So, yeah, so I've got the usual games to show you. And I've also got a couple of Amstrad games I want to share with you that were um, highlighted to me by a chap called Ewan. He's got a lot of duplicates. So he sent me a picture of them all and said that I want any of them. Not as gifts, but he gave me a fantastic price for them nonetheless. Uh, nonetheless. So, yeah, a couple of Amstrad games. Um, I'll get them out of the way now, actually, if I show you what I've got from Ewan. We'll leave a link to his own channel in the description box below. He is a collector very similar to myself. who have got multiple different formats, right back from the Atari VCS to current systems, really. So, what's a shame is that he doesn't get a lot of content out. It'd be nice to see more from you, Ewan, to be honest. Now, the first game I've been after for a while on the Amstrad, um, it never seems to come up for a reasonable price. <clears throat> but yeah, that is SDI. Again, I've got this across all three platforms. Looks just like the specy version though. Another dastardly specy port. Hard to tell really, I'm not sure if those screenshots are from the Spectrum. They just look rather blue. So yeah, they might well be Amstrad shots. And next up is a game I've only recently seen on um, eBay. It's the first time I've seen it on the Amstrad. And again I picked it up from Ewan. That's WWF WrestleMania. Very, very seldom we see this on the Amstrad. Specky versions don't come up that often, but you'll find it quite a lot on the Commodore 64. So yeah, again, really chuffed to have it. Again, looks like it's not a Specky port, because the graphics look a little bit more colourful. So absolutely chuffed to have those, so thank you very much, Ewan, for uh, letting me know you had those in your doubles pile. So I said it takes me down to eight now on, on the Amstrad to pick up. Four of those games are surprisingly Difficult to find, bearing in mind they're not overly difficult to find games on any, any other platform, really. But again, I'll leave a comment below, pin it, and then that'll be the games I'm left to get for those different systems. So, yeah, 4 Spec E, 8 Amstrad 1, C64. <clears throat> now, the games I'm going to show you, again, like I said, are mostly familiar. Um, I had them either on the Spectrum or had them on the Atari ST. Um, let's crack on, shall we? Yeah, so the first game is based on a film I remember seeing around the same sort of time I first ever saw Robocop. The film itself is very cheesy and stars Sylvester Stallone and that game is Rambo 3. What should we do now, John? Fuck them. Can't beat it, can you? Those one-liners. These ha! Well, what's that one about the light? It's a blue light. What does it do? It shines blue. My god. I tell you, but the game itself is, is a good game. I like it. I know many people wouldn't like it. It's one of those, like, you pick up objects to, to sort of progress in the game, really. Like any game, yes, I know. But you pick up things you will need later on in the game, like, for example, a mine um, detector, stuff like that. So you go, you go across many multiple screens, which are mostly pointless, to find certain items to move on to the next level. So it, it can be a bit arduous. I like it. It's one of the games I like. Got a cracking tune from Jonathan Dunn. Um, and nice graphics for a Sinclair Spectrum. But yeah, come out in all five sort of popular formats in the, in the UK at the time. Again, that's what's that movie 14. That'll cost you no more than a couple of quid posted. As is the next one. Again, an arcade number eight. Cheap and cheerful. One of my favourite genres on the Spectrum was the old joystick wagglers. And that game is... Combat school. Slight difference with this one is you go through combat school with the aim of completing a mission at the end, which I've never ever completed the mission, but I think I've got there before, but not well, many years ago. 
Yeah, nice bit of cover art there for Bob Wakelin. I'm not sure if the Rambo 3 cover is actual an illustration. Or is it, looks, it looks like he's drawn to me. But at the same time, it might just be the poster from the original film. I don't bloody know. But yeah, combat score. I can play it quite well today until I get to the Iron Man level where you've got to waggle the joystick and then move in one direction or another to avoid an obstacle. And I can't I can't do it. I just cannot coordinate myself to be able to do that. But it's a cracking game nonetheless. One of the better joystick wagglers on the Sinclair Spectrum, I've got to say. Now next up is a game, again, developed by the same team, actually. Just noticed that. These three games, I'm pretty sure the same programmers were involved with all of them. Yeah, this one again is a sequel to one of my favourite arcade conversions on the Sinclair Spectrum, and that is... Operation Thunderbolt. Again, a nice Bob Waken cover art. Yeah, I think Andrew Deacon and Ivan Horn. Especially Andrew Deacon, I think, had something to do with all three of these games. This is Arcade 37, so quite late on. This game, though, just pushed the Spectrum to the limits. It's got some fantastic graphics. Albeit in monochrome, but yeah, the machine doesn't really slow down that bad. Bearing in mind, there's about 15, 20 large sprites going across the screen. Now, again, I can only get to level 2, but I do find it bloody hard across all the formats, to be honest. But yeah, it's, it's again cheap and cheerful. Arcade 37, I think I just said that. It shouldn't cost you more than a couple of quid. Again, posted. Cheap as chips. I think prices have now finally. Seen a bit of sense and settling down a little bit, except for those last four games that everyone seems to want. Just be aware of those. All right, next up again, another game by Ocean Software. Cracking bit of cover art on this one too. Arcade conversion, but not called this name, I believe. That game is Gryzor. I bought this game back in the day and I absolutely loved it. Quite hard though. Run and gun. Some levels you're walking into a maze, but again, you're still shooting away. And some levels are platform levels, which are a bit of a pain in the ass. Because one of them, you jump up a platform, if you miss that platform, you fall through the floor, which the platform you was on has disappeared. Very similar to Midnight Resistance, like that, I think. A cracking game, well presented. Um, again, this is what? RK24. Shouldn't cost you more than a fiver. But these games so far are definitely value for money. Even their full price equivalents generally don't go for much more than what you're seeing there, to be honest. Now this next one was probably the last or one of the very last demos I would have played on my Spectrum. Because at that point there, I was in the middle of trying to save up for my Atari ST. And I eventually got this game on the ST. But the 8-bit conversions are excellent. And that game is... Power Drift. Yeah, I was very impressed with the Spectrum version. The Amstrad version looks a lot better than the Specky version, plays a little bit slower, but the C64 version, bloody hell. It's blocky as you'd expect, um, but the music and the, the sense of speed, and, and it's got more in common with the arcade than all the other versions have. So I thought the Commodore 64 version was a superior version. But yeah, the SD version I had, I got it home, I think I paid about 20, 25 quid for it. I completed two of the stages really quickly. And then decided to take it back. But back then, like now I suppose, you can't really just take games back. I had to go to one Virgin Megastore in Oxford Street to get it resealed. Because I said I bought it as a present, tested it, and it doesn't work. Oh, it doesn't work. I can't remember how I did it. I did something to get it resealed, to take it back, to get my money back. It was a flipping palaver. It might come back to me in a minute. I can't bloody remember. Because they asked why I opened it. I said I opened it to test it. For some reason, some excuse I gave as to why I couldn't keep it. Ah, that was it. It was a duplicate. So that person got a present. It was a birthday present, I think it was. And so I already bought it for him. So yeah, bloody palaver to send that poxy game back, I tell you that. But yeah, I prefer the specy version by a country mile over the ST version, to be honest. Right, the next four, five games are quite hard to find. Um, three of them would have come from bundles. One of them I can't remember where I got it from, and one I got from the guy down the road who said the biggest single spectrum collection in the world. Yeah, so first up is a game that I remember playing on my ST on demo. Um, the graphics were very much of their time. Digit eye sprites, 
I think they used it quite a lot in the Mortal Kombat games, actually. And that's... Uh... Hit Fighter. A dreadful game. But back in the day, especially on the ST, it did look good because it looked very different. The Spectrum version, you've got two massive sprites, very cumbersome sprites. And it's an absolute flipping nightmare to play. This is RK56. Uh, this one I got as part of a bundle back in January. I think it's the first game I got this year, actually. But the bundle was 70 quid. I sold quite a few games at the bundle. I think this probably ended up costing me around 20 quid in the end. It's not a bad price for a game that's quite difficult to find. But I'm pretty sure I've seen about four or five copies this year. So it's not overly, overly difficult. But it is tricky nonetheless. Uh, the next one, again, surprisingly a very difficult <coughs> movie time to find across the different uh, systems and can go for a little bit more than you'd expect especially on like the 64 the Amstrad version I'm still waiting for I haven't seen it come up in the last sort of four or five months I've been collecting the Amstrad but the specky one again you don't see it very often and that game is Spy Who Loved Me again a game I played on my ST uh, it's an okay game, nothing special, much prefer License to Kill to be honest. This is movie 23 and I would expect to be paying between 25 and about 40 quid for that, nowadays. But I said prices are starting to tumble back down to where they should really be to be honest. So, But yes, it's one of those games that you wouldn't expect to be as difficult to find as, as it is. Yeah, so that's a Spy Who Loved Me. Uh, the next game I picked up from the chap down the road, again this I paid 20 quid for, which at the time seemed a little bit steep. Uh, based on the Taito Arcade Classic, I'm pretty sure it must have been remade under the Taito banner in the late 80s, and that game is... Super Space Invaders. I was hoping this game would be very good. In fact, it's very shit. Um, very slow, very sluggish, and bloody hard, and the graphics make it a little bit more difficult to kind of work out what the hell is going on, because it's in uh, monochrome. I'm not sure what the other versions play like, they might play a lot better than the specky version. Again, this game I've only seen once this year as part of a bundle, which I highlighted to Dave, which he picked up in due course. Again, value-wise, got no idea, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes between 50 and £75 nowadays. But generally, like I said, I pay 20 for it, so it shouldn't really be that expensive. But it is, again, another flipping sod to find. And that is RK58, which is the second to last arcade game in the library. And next up is the final arcade game in the library. Another one I picked up in a bundle. This bundle I got with a Spectrum and a load of games. I think I offered the guy 70 quid for it, he took it. So that was a bargain, really. Now game is Skull and Crossbones, which I've only recently seen listed on eBay. I think it's sold for it's over 110 quid. So again, a very complicated game. I do need this on the Amstrad. Again, the Amstrad version I've only ever seen once. That again was part of the bundle. Um, but yeah, I, I don't like it. I think it's a very sluggish game. It's a very unresponsive game. I've never played it in the arcade before. I did pick it up on the Amiga a couple of years back and sold it because I didn't like it. Um, so yeah, again, this would have cost me next to nothing because I got the bundle for a relatively cheap price. That is Skull and Crossbones. And finally, is one of the more desirable games you can find on a Hitscore label. It is a movie tie-in, a film I remember seeing back in the early 90s. It was okay. Not bad, quite a quirky film. The game, is, again, is one I saw as part of a wider bundle. That Game is the Adams Family. Because the Adams Family, again, this game holds its value, but I've seen this game half a dozen times at least this year. Uh, first time I saw it this year, I remember getting home from the sorting office, putting the phone on, and this game was in the actual listings for something like £2.50. So, yeah, um, I went on it, and obviously it, it sold. So I just missed out on buying this game for £2.50. I know it came up as part of a bundle, which Dave bought for about £35, including a couple of other really difficult to find hit squad tiles. So you've got an absolute bargain with that. Uh, I think before all that, it came up on Facebook for about £2.50. Then I've seen it come up on Facebook again um, at an auction 
I think that went for about 300 quid. And it came up recently on eBay for 400 pound or best offer and disappeared really quick. So it, it's crazy what people pay for it, but it's certainly not the most difficult game to find on the Hit Squad label. On the other hand, I have I don't have it on the Amstrad. So the Amstrad version must be an absolute bastard to find because it was the last game release by Ocean Software full price for both the Amstrad and the Speccy. So a difficult game to find either way, to be honest. Well, that's it, yeah. So that's me done until I get the final four, which could take an eternity. I will do that variant video. I keep meaning to do it, but I now have enough Spanish games. I have some Spanish fan-made games. I've got some Soviet fan-made games coming. I've got a couple of... I've got one Amiga title. I don't collect Hit Squad on the Amiga. But this game, when I saw it, I think I saw it on Hall of Light. I, I clicked on the image of it, and you couldn't tell the difference between the full price version and the Hit Squad version. And I was amazed <laughs> that this game had a Hit Squad label on it, to be honest. But I'll show you that at some point. But I know... We tried to compile a list for our Facebook group. It's not on that list. But yeah, when I show it to you, you'll be like, what the hell? But yeah, it's very similar. To, very, it's identical, in fact, to the full price release of that game. You just would never know it was a hit squad variant. But that's it. Um, I don't think there's much else to go through. So yeah, thank you very much for watching the video. Thank you very much for subscribing. I'll see you guys again real soon. So take care and bye for now.